Okay, so I've done most of the, the calculations for the pool variance on the calculator already. These aren't that hard. You could probably just do these by hand, but using a calculator for these kind of endless ca calculations, especially for bigger data sets, is perfectly appropriate. Um, but I just use a calculator just to save time. So uh, the entirety of this uh, uh, sigma, uh, the difference between um, each iteration of x and its mean, that ended up being 5. And the difference, the summation of all the differences between all iterations of y and uh, the mean of treatment y turned out to be 22. Um, we already found out the denominator down here, which is equal to degrees freedom, which we'll talk about in a second, is equal to 6. So 5 plus 27, which is 5 plus 22 equals 27, all divided by 6, equals 4.5. So now we have our pooled variance expressions. That's the most difficult calculation of all this. So once you've got pooled variance down, you should be you know, smooth sailing from here on out. So again, let's go back to the main uh, T formula. We already have uh, y bar, which is 3.5 minus, or excuse me, x bar minus y bar, which is five. So this is, of course, gonna be um, uh, 1.5. Then go back down to our denominator. We have pool variance equals 4.5 divided by n sub x, which is, of course is four, plus pool variance again, uh, divided by n sub y, which is also four. And then you have your main treatment, okay? And if I calculate those numbers, say we have 4.5 divided by 4 plus uh, 4.5 divided by 4 again. All right, um, the square, and that turns out to be 2.25. Square root of 2.25 is equal to 1.5. So then we come back down here t is equal to the absolute value, I guess this is technically uh, negative 5, but it doesn't really matter um, because of the absolute value sign. 1.5 all over uh, 1.5, so then we have a t value, which turns out to be a nice clean number, this is kind of weird, t value equals 1.0, okay? So that's our t value. So now let's take a step back, we'll come back to this t statistic, and we'll definitely come back to this degrees of freedom. All right, and then once you join me over here, and then we're going to actually look at the theory, the, more of the statistical theory behind this mindless map. Okay, so basically, if you imagine these curves as essentially um, uh, histograms or smoothed out histograms, or if you ever done integrals, stuff like that, smoothed out histograms, visual representations of treatment x and treatment y, and we could tell just by eyeballing these treatments over here that y bar looks like it, it should be bigger, um, on the averages should be bigger. The, the 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 histogram of treatment y should be bigger than treatment x. So this is this is a re relatively kind of accurate representation of both treatments, right? So basically, what the t test is trying to do is not only is it trying to measure the difference in means, but it's also trying to measure the amount of overlap between both of these data sets, right? And the overlap is this portion right here. Okay. So in other words, um, t tests and all major parametric statistical tests test two main things, right? They test uh, measures of central tendency, and they test uh, measures of data dispersion. The dispersion can also be thought of as data spread, right? So what do we mean by, by measures of central tendency? We mean things like, uh, well, the mathematical mean, uh, mode, and median. Right? In this case, in our t-test, we're focusing just here on the mean, right? but a measure of central tendency is a measure of the central weight of a given, of a given data set. Right? Now, uh, measures of data dispersion includes, thing like, includes things like uh, variance, uh, range, and standard deviation, which those of you who have taken stats before you know the standard deviation is actually the square root of variance. But, but basically, the point I want you to take away from this is that your t-test is measuring um, both of these, okay? If you just analyze the difference in means, you're not going to get a good analysis of whether or not your data, of whether or not your treatments are statistically significantly different. The same goes if you only measure the amount of spread of each data, okay? You need a good statistical test, which is what our t-test is, that's a very generalized form, but still quite robust. Measures both of these um, data statistics, right? 
So um, if we go back to our T formula here, you can see which parts of this formula are, um, are measuring what type of data statistic, right? The numerator here, x bar minus y bar, is measuring uh, central tendency. The difference in central tendency, rather, between treatments x and y. The, use another color here, the numer or excuse me, the denominator here is everything within this uh, square root expression is measuring the different, the uh, amount of overlap or the difference in dispersion. The difference in dispersion or overlap, whichever uh, expression you prefer, between treatments x and y, all right? And now if we come back here, we can now uh, make a better hypothesis or a better uh, projection over um, what we think that, in fact, the true differences are between uh, treatments x and y, right? You, you actually, in theory, you should probably do this to begin with, but I think it's better to explain what hypotheses are once you actually have some better idea of what's going on with these mathematical equations that we just covered, right? So in general, in any sort of hypothesis test, you need a, a minimum of two uh, hypotheses, right? Uh, you need an alternative hypothesis, which is what, um, which is one or more version of what you think is actually going on between these data set, between these data sets, and you need a null hypothesis, which is known as I like to call it the killjoy hypothesis or the straw man hypothesis. Right. So if we just look at this represent, rough res, representation of these data points, um, again, assuming that you know, these are the the different values of your data points. Again, these are histograms. This is the amount of each data point in each uh, curve or in each histogram. So the numbers are increasing as we go to the right. So just looking at this visual representation of our data, I would, I would wager that, um, that the, the, the data trend does exist. And I would say that the, the, the total value of treatment Y, again, it could be any, anything that you're measuring. You could, you could be comparing the GPA and of two different uh, lab sections. You could be comparing the height of men versus women. You could be comparing uh, the, uh, the, the instances of heart disease in different age groups, it doesn't matter. These are just imaginary uh, placeholder treatments. But looking at this data, I would say, uh, or I would predict that uh, treatment Y is greater than treatment X. And usually in hypotheses you would say because such and such, right? You, you know, if you could say, like if we're measuring the difference in height between men and women, you would say that, well, I predict that the, uh, most men will be taller than most women because I don't know, something you learned biologically like long ago, right? Now, the null hypothesis is, uh, like I said, it's, it's the straw man. It's, it's the sort of, it's the, the sort of uh, killjoy hypothesis that you're trying to uh, reject. This is actually what your uh, t-test, what your uh, mathematical equations are actually measuring, right? So, and what the null hypothesis says is that there will be um, no difference between treatment X and treatment Y or that they should essentially be, be equal. There's going to be no non-random uh, difference between these two. So another way of saying that is um, uh, you could also state with respect to the experimental variable, um, which, which could be, uh, which, uh, let's stick with the, 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 the height and, men, and uh, women versus men, right? You could say that uh, um, the experimental variable here, the only thing that you're changing between treatments is going to be the sex of your uh, subjects. You could say that, um, for the null hypothesis, that sex has no effect on height, right? Just anecdotally, you would think that's unlikely, but this is, this is what you're actually performing your statistics on. It's the null hypothesis, right? Um, and then in a second, I'll draw a uh, null distribution and then we'll go over working with the uh, t-distribution chart.